Hi, this is Eva from Once Upon a Timeline, and today we're going to discuss more Mandela effect changes to the human brain. Okay, so we've already discussed in past episodes, these are the divisions I remember from days of old, occipital lobe, parietal lobe, frontal lobe. They've changed a little, but they look mostly the same. I'm definitely recognizable parts. Okay, but the interesting things start to show up when you go inside the brain. So this is a cut here, and it shows a slice across the center. So it'd be split and open the brain, you'd be looking in the inside. So it's basically a cross section. Now it starts to look weird. Um, if any of you kind of remember how the brain used to look, you'll probably be looking at the center region, thinking, what the hell is all that stuff? Believe me, I thought the same thing. Very weird in here. It used to just be pretty homogeneous in here. Um, one thing that I did notice right away, besides this weird co corpus callosum stuff in here, is um, the brain stem itself used to be further out of the brain. It looks like it's almost gotten rammed into the brain here. Uh, it used to be the brain stem was a stem, and it uh, the brain would end, and then there'd be a little bit of the, the midbrain and hindbrain would come right after it. The cerebellum was smaller, pons, midbrain, they were... The midbrain was right there at the base, and then these others were smaller and further out. So now there's a lot more going on here in the center. I mean, I almost can imagine why everybody's getting headaches just looking at this thing. Um, so it looks really different. All right, so let's look at another picture that shows the internal divisions even better. Now, just to review, these are the divisions we discussed before, which is the divisions that I remember. This is the cross section. Now let's look at how they're dividing. This is almost like another kind of divisions in here. Um, unfortunately, this one is reversed from the other images. The eyes are in front here, so it looks opposite of this one where the eyes are in front over here. But basically, they have a whole new system of divisions they're using now. And this is one of the reasons I got so confused as I was looking at the brain sections. This area here is the frontal lobe and it corresponds to this red region here. Weirdly, the frontal lobe splits this paracentral lobule right down the middle. Uh, I don't know why they would call it a frontal lobe and not pick either here or here, but yes, it, it hits right in the middle. It's very strange. Um, and then you've got the occipital lobe in the back, which does seem to split right here, and then the parietal lobe is half of the paracentral lobule plus the precuneus. Now, most of these terms in here I have not heard of before. Um, corpus callosum, that one's old. Fusiform gyrus, I remember that going way back to the 90s. Um, cingulate gyrus, I've heard that at least the last eight or nine years. I, I did not really study much about it, but it is fairly familiar. I, I don't remember studying it in school, though, um, way back in the uh, 90s, I don't remember that. I certainly held do not remember cuneus, precuneus, paracentral lobule. I, I looked up a lobule is supposed to be a small lobe. Superior frontal gyrus, no. Hippocampal gyrus, I don't remember that. I remember hippocampus. Um, lingual gyrus, no. And all of these dark lines here are all deep fissures that are landmarks for these parts. So we did not used to have fissures that were landmarks for parts. It was very hard to tell where something was, very hard, because you just knew it was in kind of in a general region. Um, it varied from person to person. But uh, now we have these divisions here that really separate sections of the brain. Um, they only s somewhat have to do with the old divisions. So the whole thing, I mean, a lot of learning curve for me in here. All right, so let's, uh, oh, one other thing I noticed was really interesting is I talked previously about how the actual cranial fissures, the pieces of bone that went on the top, were now kind of lining up with some of the, the um, brain features inside. But one thing I said that was weird was that you know, although the frontal lobe came, comes way out here, the frontal bone cut right here not where the frontal lobe ended. But now that I'm looking at these interior divisions, 
The frontal bone fissure is right here, right between this paracentral lobule and the superior frontal gyrus. So that makes a lot of sense. The bone is lining up with these new divisions that we're seeing here. And I think what we're going to find is that these new divisions become the status quo and the old divisions become less and less spoke of, spoken of. I think that that's still in the early stages of that happening, but um, everything is lining up with these new divisions, which I, I have to say I find shocking. I just, I've never even seen any of this before. I studied the brain extensively in the 90s. I kept an eye on it over the years. Um, I did notice a lot of weird stuff in here about a year and a half ago when I learned of the ME. So I'm not sure exactly when these came in, but I don't think that they're more than maybe three or four years old because I just, I did not see these going back that far. Okay, so here, uh, this shows the, the division here where the, this is the frontal bone and uh, it cuts right here, which is right about here. So I just wanted to show that it lines up now. I'm gonna delete that one. Okay, so this region here, they're calling it the cingulate cortex. Let's see if you can find it, which is this red thing here. They're calling that the cingulate cortex. Um, I've, I've definitely heard of the prefrontal cortex and other cortex, but I've never heard of the cingulate cortex until just recently. Um, let's see. Um, receives input from the thalamus and the neocortex and projects into blah, blah, blah. Um, involved with emotion formation and processing learning and memory. The combination of these three functions makes singulate gyrus highly influential in linking behavioral outcomes to motivational, to motivation and learning and blah, blah, blah. Okay, so it, it's kind of um, frontal cortex kind of stuff and I'm, I mean, I, I want to say this is kind of like just a more defined aspect of the frontal cortex. Uh, the frontal cortex was always here, and it used to include everything below it. Apparently now it doesn't, but this is frontal cortex kind of activities, motivation, uh, personality, those kinds of things. Okay, so that's the cingulate cortex. Um, and then it says in here the cingulate cortex is usually considered part of the limbic lobe, which also freaked me out because I've never heard of a limbic lobe. I've, I've heard of a limbic system, but not a limbic lobe, not a whole specific lobe that is dedicated to it. Okay, the limbic lobe is an arc-shaped region of the cortex in the medial surface. Um, the term is ambiguous. It, it It's almost like it's the same thing as, as the... Um, cingulate cortex. I mean, I'm not really exactly seeing what the divisions are in here. Um, it's saying the limbic load is a little bit ambiguous. Broca named limbic load, and and that's about it for the limbic lobe. I'm, there's, this is a real tiny wiki. Right? This is really a new concept that's still being developed. It's, uh, I noticed that when, a wiki, when something is new, when an Emmy is really new on the scene, the, the wiki is really short often. You can almost see a uh, how early in the development something is if uh, the wiki is that tiny little thing. All right, so let's look at a couple other places here. Um, lingual gyrus, that one is, that one is interesting for me. This is the back of the brain here. Um, the cuneus is involved with um, processing visual stimuli. Um, that makes sense because the back of the brain the occipital lobe is involved with that. Lingual gyrus. Lingual gyrus sounds like it has to something to do with language, lingual language. But what you go over here is linked to processing vision, especially related to letters. Also play a role in logical conditions and encoding visual memories. Okay, it is at the back of the brain, so that's usually the visual section. Why is it called the lingual gyrus? The lingual gyrus is named after the shape it mostly most closely resembles the tongue. So they're saying it's named lingual gyrus because it looks like a tongue. Um, I don't think it looks that much like a tongue. It looks like a blob. It looks like a lot of things. If I looked at that shape, I did not go, oh, that's a tongue. So anyway, contrary to the name, the region has little to do with speech. I find that kind of interesting because first of all, never heard of that friggin' lingual gyrus. Um, it doesn't look like a tongue to me. 
it has a word that has the name makes it sound like it's going to be that it might down the line have something to do with speech. It's actually really close to the speech centers of the brain here in the middle. Um, it kind of stretches out in that direction. Okay, so what's its current function? Role in vision. This, this region is believed to play a role in vision and dreaming. Visual memory dysfunction and visual limbic disconnection have been shown in cases where the lingual gyrus has been damaged. Um, visual memory is supposed to be stored here. And also really interesting, hypermetabolism of the lingual gyrus has been associated with visual snow. Hypermetabolism means it's just kind of like it's hyper in there. Um, visual snow is something real interesting to me because I have visual snow. Um, you can look up the term, but basically see kind of a, a weird fuzz or static in your vision, especially at night or on a black background, your vision's a little fuzzy and uh, it doesn't really hurt anything. I've had it since the nineties. I've been following visual snow for a long time. And I can tell you right now that it was never linked to the lingual gyrus. It, it just, they didn't know where it was from. I mean, this visual snow link goes back to 98. I mean, before I even knew about visual snow, they knew that this region was involved with visual snow and that's just not right. Um, I, that's just totally not right. All right, here's another interesting part. The lingual gy, the lingual gyrus, yes, that's the right word. Uh, has a role in word processing. So they're saying that it's called lingual gyrus, even though it has nothing to do with language, but yet it has a role in word processing. So um, specifically they're saying it's identification of letters. Um, all that I think that eventually we're going to see that this lingual gyrus becomes more and more involved with language and that the, the name will make more sense over time. One additional thing that it is saying it's involved with is um, recognition of faces. And ironically, or perhaps not so ironically, I also have a problem with facial recognition and visual memory. And this, this section is heavily involved now, they say, with all of those things, which would have been so easy to notice that pattern in the past if it had been there that all of my visual problems are linked to this one very specific area, whereas before I thought that they were linked to fusiform gyrus, which is what they always said uh, was in charge of those. So that's really changed. I don't. It probably doesn't mean much to you guys, but it's it's pretty weird for me. All right, so there's lingual gyrus. Let's see what else. Oh, paracentral lobule. That's this little thing in here. Um, it has to do with sensory processing. Um, this is the one that's split down in the middle. It's uh, part, part of it is in the frontal lobe and part is in the parietal lobe according to these old divisions here. So it's kind of like right in the middle here. All right, let's see where are we at. All right, considered part of the parietal lobe and deals with somatosensory of the distal limbs. Again, we have the world's shortest, tiniest little wiki here. Um, very little information in here. Just strange that they would not have more on a huge brain part. All right, so next part, superior frontal gyrus, which is uh, this whole big chunk. This is the whole front of your head here. Um, again, the world's shortest wiki, a couple paragraphs. It's, it's involved with self-awareness and laughter. But not much else, not much else. Again, really short wiki. Okay, so there's there's some of the stuff that's going on. I've kind of covered right around here. Um, I'm going to try to get more into here next time. All of these structures are, are either new or they were just some kind of vague area in the past. Um, they were tiny. Corpus callosum was not that developed at all. I've never heard of fornix. There's just there's so much going in here on here. I think you should definitely keep an eye on this map here, this is, I think, the map that we're going to get for the future of brain development. This is Eva signing off for Once Upon a Timeline. Yeah.